Hey guys, in this video I'd like to talk about this equation up here. So this equation basically allows you to determine whether or not a reaction will proceed spontaneously. And it does that using this term here, delta G. And this is Gibbs free energy. And what you need to know is that if Gibbs free energy is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. However, if Gibbs free energy is positive, then the reaction is not spontaneous. And you can see that Gibbs free energy is determined by all of this, right? So delta H is the enthalpy change. This is the amount of heat that is either absorbed or released by the reaction, and it allows us to say whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. T, this is the temperature in Kelvin. And importantly, I put in parentheses here zero Kelvin because this is the lowest that Kelvin can go. And that's important because you need to know that Kelvin can never be negative. You can't have a negative Kelvin. It's it, the lowest it goes is zero. That's where it bottoms out. And the entropy change, delta S, is essentially the increase or decrease in randomness of the chemical reaction. Okay, so we know this equation allows us to determine whether or not a reaction will proceed spontaneously, but what are some of the possible outcomes? So I have them listed out here in four different cases that you have to know, and let's go through this chart. So I think case one and case four are actually the easiest to understand, so let's start with those. So imagine in case one, we have a positive delta S. In other words, our entropy increased. We had an increase in randomness and our delta S term is positive. We also know that we have a negative delta H. So that means we had an exothermic reaction, delta H decreased and thus we gave off heat. And we know that this is always gonna to contribute to a negative delta G and thus the reaction under these conditions is always spontaneous. So let's think about why this is the case. So delta S being positive, what does that mean for this entire term over here? Well, we know T is always gonna be positive, right? Because it's in Kelvin. And if delta S is also positive, then this overall term here is positive. Thus, we're subtracting a positive number. And then delta H we know is negative. So it's a negative minus another number. So if it's a negative minus another number, delta G is always gonna be negative, right? It's impossible for delta G to not be negative. So we know delta G in this case is always negative, and thus the reaction is always spontaneous. Okay, the opposite scenario happens in case four. In this case, delta S is negative. We had a decrease in randomness or a decrease in entropy, while delta H is positive. Thus we absorbed heat or we had an endothermic reaction, so this term is positive. So think about what a negative delta S means for this overall term here. Again, we know T is gonna be positive. So if we multiply it by a negative delta S, that makes this overall term negative. So we'll have minus a negative term here. And if delta H is positive, then we're gonna have a positive number minus a negative number. In other words, a positive number plus another number. Therefore, this is always gonna be positive, so delta G is always gonna be positive. Therefore, the reaction will never be spontaneous under these conditions. Okay, cases two and three are slightly tricky because they're actually temperature dependent. In other words, the spontaneity of a chemical reaction in case two or three actually depends on the value of the temperature. So let's walk through these carefully. So in case two, we have a positive delta S, so that means this overall term is positive, right? Because temperature can't be negative, it's always positive, times a positive is positive. So that means we're gonna have minus a positive term here. And then also we have a positive delta H. So we're gonna have a positive minus a positive. So think about it, this could be positive or negative, and let me explain that. So imagine you had a positive number minus a positive number. Could end up being positive, right? 10 minus nine is plus one. But what if the second number was bigger? 10 minus 11, this is a positive number minus a positive number, right? This would be minus one. So think about it. If in case two, the second term here is very big, we would expect to have an overall negative delta G, right? And thus the reaction would be spontaneous. So we say that at high temperatures, 
When we have a high T and this term is very big, we would expect it to be spontaneous because it would be subtracted from this and therefore would be likely to make an overall negative, thus this would be overall negative, and we'd have a spontaneous reaction. But at very low temperatures, if this T is very small, then this second term is gonna be small. And you have a case like I wrote up here, where the second term isn't big enough to make the first term negative. So at low temperatures, in case two, if you have a positive delta S and a positive delta H, you would have a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, so case three is sort of the opposite of case two. Now, delta S and delta H are both negative. So think about what that's gonna mean for our delta G. Well, if delta S is negative, then we're gonna have a negative number right here times a positive temperature. So this overall term will be negative. So we'll have minus a negative, which is just like saying plus something. And then delta H is gonna be negative. So we're gonna have a negative number plus a number. So if you think about it, this could be positive or negative. It's like saying, imagine delta H was negative 10. We know it's gonna be negative. And then T delta S is gonna be negative, but it's minus a negative, so it's really plus another number. So let's imagine a case where the temperature was low. Let's say the temperature was one Kelvin and delta S was one. So we would have minus 10 for delta H plus one. Well, this would still be minus nine, right? So actually at low temperatures, case three is spontaneous because it produces an overall negative delta G. But you can imagine if the temperature gets very high and we're adding a big enough term here to this negative 10, let's say we added 11, now we end up with plus one. So we have a positive delta G in that case, thus a non-spontaneous reaction. So in case three, if the temperature gets too high, delta G can become positive. So this chart can be confusing, but I guarantee if you go through it enough times and you really just try to understand the positives and negatives of this equation, it's really just math, you'll eventually get it and it'll sink in. Uh, but I really hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions or you're interested in tutoring, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring and I'll see you guys in the next video. A chemical reaction is gonna proceed spontaneously. <laughs>